it can be anything, but really we look at it through the lens of is it going to solve an opportunity? Is the tech great? And can we do something besides providing cash? We've had opportunities in racing data providers, esports data providers, sports data providers, um, vision suppliers, integrity suppliers, voice betting solution, text betting solutions. We've had an author, we've had interesting people. But we've never had anyone that actually was on Dancing with the Stars. Now, this is this is kind of like, this is big. There's not many times you're talking to someone sports betting that was also on Dancing with the Stars. It's probably a close second to uh, Dancing with the Stars being on, the, on our yeah. interview series. Yeah. This, is, this is right up there. Our, our ratings are through the roof in the U.S. So you, you wouldn't believe it. Hello. Today we have Tom Waterhouse from Waterhouse, B.C. Uh, Tom, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, Kevin, for having me on. Um, Look, my, my family has been in the gambling industry uh, for well over 100 years. My great-grandfather was a bookie back in the 1800s, and then my grandfather was the biggest bookie in the world in, in the 50s and 60s. He was taking million-pound bets when you could buy a biggest house here in Sydney for £3,000. Um, and then my, my dad was a, a bookmaker. He built uh, one of the first groups to build a computer system to bet and win on horse racing. So he's run a professional betting syndicate since 1980. Never had a losing quarter for forty-three years. So um, long history. And and then my my grandfather on my mum's side, he was Australia's leading horse trainer. And my mum is uh, Australia's uh, highest living Group One winning horse trainer um, as well. So history on both sides of both gambling and, and horse racing. And um, I I didn't like uh, horse racing at all growing up, or any, have anything to do with betting, but. When I was at university, my first year, I worked for my dad at, at the racetrack and fell in love with it. So I changed around all my uni lectures and, and shoots and, and became a bookie at the Dogs and then formed a partnership with my grandfather who came out of retirement at 80 years of age. And we rose up from being the, the smallest bookies um, on course to being the largest bookmakers in Australia. And um, we did it sort of through a few things. Obviously, I, I had the experience of, of learning from my grandfather and dad, who were great mentors and teachers. And and also, I had the benefit of my dad's form um, and also had access to new technologies. Bedfair sort of came out around that time and was able to get on and uh, adapt to that much quicker than the existing bookies there. And I moved to Melbourne, which had more relaxed uh, taxation laws in Australia and, and the business boomed. And so, by 2008, I was the largest bookie uh, in Australia and thought that the rest of my life would be as an on-course bookmaker. I thought it was the best thing ever. And and that uh, and, and then that all changed. The advertising laws changed in Australia, uh, probably similar pa- PASPA changing in 2018 in the US. And it allowed online operators to be able to advertise uh, across state lines. And so what went from being an amazing business very quickly turned to being a business in decline. So I launched a, an online betting business in 2009, TomWaterhouse.com, and it was the fastest growing online betting business here in Australia. It went from 100 customers to a quarter of a million in 18 months. But I didn't have the scale to compete with the global giants of uh, like uh, Paddy Power, who, who owns Flutter or is part of Flutter, and obviously FanDuel, Bet365, uh, Ladbrokes, which is now in Tain, and, and so on. And so uh, William Hill did a... Uh, which uh, you know through the acquisition of Caesars in the US, so William Hill did a $700 million roll-up in 2013 in Australia. And we were a, a small add-on as part of that acquisition, um, but they asked me to be the CEO of their Australian business. So I ran that for four years, um, which was a great learning experience. Australian business had 500 people here in Australia, another couple of hundred in the Philippines, a team in Tel Aviv, um, obviously New Zealand and all over Australia. And and so it was a it was a very different learning experience and, and learned so much from that time. And then William Hill Australia business sold to Poker Stars or Stars Group as part of the Bet Easy Stars and then uh, merged with Sportsbet uh, here in Australia. And so I had a two year non compete and I thought, well, what am I going to do? I only know betting. Um, it's been my whole working life. And I thought going and I couldn't be an operator, but I thought there was an angle in. In investing, and I thought anyone could understand how to value businesses like a, a FanDuel, DraftKings, Caesars, MGM, William Hill, Ladbrokes, etc. It's the same lines as the PL in that you've got turnover, gross win, 
you've got cost of sales, you've got marketing costs, headcount costs, technology costs. But whether a business should be trading at eight times, 12 times, 15 times earnings, you might be slightly better than another analyst, but there isn't really that much of an edge. But all of these businesses, these big betting businesses, have a, a long list of suppliers, technology suppliers. And once those suppliers get into the ecosystem, they're very sticky and the revenue sticky. It's just whether they can get into more than one operator's ecosystem and whether that product is going to be really popular. And I thought that was an area that, I, from my experience, being in the industry and going from startup to running William Hill, I had a quite a good understanding of. And so basically got a, a group of the best engineers that I'd, I'd worked with and said, let's go and look around the world at what is what we think is the best technology supplying the gambling industry. And that was the beginning of our fund, Waterhouse BC, in 2019 and sort of coincided with 2018 uh, repealing of PASPA. And, and yeah, it's been an amazing journey over the last sort of four and a half years of uh, going around the world and, and, and finding and looking at the best technology and, and sticking into the industry that that I, yeah, I just love and 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 is part of my life and the family's life for a long long time. Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> all that information. I mean, uh, great bio. My life feels so simple now. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Bye. <laughs> yeah, bye. <Tom. laughs> um, it's interesting uh, because Betfair has been our client for about a dozen years, um, and. Um, and, and we actually do a lot with, with horse racing uh, with them as well, uh, particularly uh, live streaming. Um, but in, in terms of technology, it sounds like you're really keen on kind of uh, maybe not bleeding edge, but leading edge technologies. Like well, what what like, what kind of technologies like excite you? Like, you know, sometimes like, you know, the old stuff can be great if it's done better. Sometimes you're like, something new with a potential to really pop like what's kind of your um or things that draw, draw you to it well is it solving um like the existing operators problems is it is it solving and is it an area of high growth and can we add things that more than money we don't take a, a management position a board position we don't have any active involvement but is it something besides money? Do we have experience of, of a blueprint of how they could roll that out? Uh, do we have, in, do as our engineering team have the ability to be able to make slight changes in their product that can get them into the product uh, rollout? Do we have existing operators that we know very well that actually really need that product and it could actually enhance their business dramatically? And they're, they're sort of how we think about it and, and we try and keep it very narrow in an area that's our core skill set. We don't know the whole gambling industry really well. We know certain pockets pockets of it really well. And so is it is it really in our wheelhouse? Because for us, the way we the way we look at uh, investing, we actually invest through an option structure. And so because we we get options in these um, technology supplies, which gives us a, a large upside if we get it right um we our biggest thing that we risk is not money it's it's actually our time so we'd rather right. do a, a half a dozen really great investments and deals um than do 50 um because for us it's we don't want to waste the time we want to do be very uh concentrated in where we think is going to be a great chance of, of getting a large increase in value rather than just going, oh, we'll do a deal for the sake of doing a deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I like how you uh, approach it too with your engineering team, you know, especially for a company like, you know, Data Art, you know, where we have, we also, when we meet with partners first, we look at the technology and their team and their CTO. So when you, you know, walk us through, who are, who are you most excited about in your portfolio um, that you can talk about? Um, you know that we may know or we may not know and what what got your yeah. your your engineers excited you know from to bring it to you and say this is it this is this is this is something we should get behind well i'll give you an example of um so uh, i i think your point about the engineers it really is such 
a huge advantage and I, and I don't think I'd be in um, this business unless I had a, a great team that, that I work with with here and, and they're just superstars in, in it's very easy to get bamboozled by an idea and a presentation mm-hmm. but if you've got the people with that have built leading apps and websites in the space for the last 15 years and they actually have uh, that isn't my skill set you know I've come from a betting and bookmaking background and and I've had to be a little bit of jack of all trades going through startup process and having to understand each area, like area of the business in running William Hill, but deep understanding of how to code and and, and the tech behind it, that's not my, my skill set. So unless I have those skills to complement um, the fund and the business, I, I would be I would be nowhere. And uh, for instance, a platform business came to us and and unbelievable presentation and then we're going to take over the world and do this and our engineers just said look this tech is not good enough it's like you have to rewrite it all and and luckily we missed we missed going down that path and and then very poor presentation business in a a a lot of um financial trouble looked like it was not going to make it but our engineers go actually the tech is really good and so uh, having an understanding of that and uh, it's it gives us um, yeah it really allows us to go okay well we're getting great value that was a really poor presentation a lot of people are going to miss this and quite a few people when when you went down the other path and our engineers go well they'll they'll be coming back and speaking to this other group within twelve months and sure enough they were and I know I know the industry I know the areas of growth and I know basically that you need that piece of tech but I don't know well enough. To know whether that tech was, I couldn't have made that decision right. between those two platforms, right. and um, so that's really um, a, a huge advantage. And, and so thankful that I've been able to work with with um, the group of uh, engineers, part of Waterhouse VC, and and they are, they run a business called Waterhouse Tech. And uh, yeah, they've been a, a huge help to me, but also they've been a huge help to a lot of operators in the industry getting their products out and. And building building some great product um i uh, yeah and, and I, I guess the the one of the deals in our portfolio probably our most recent deal we've done a deal with a, a business called bet scanner and um it's run by uh, a, a man a, a man called lord porchester george porchester who's um uh, got a, a lot of experience in the background and, and comes from an amazing history in uh uh, English history and, and and horse racing background, but also he's been down uh, being an operator path before, and he basically said, "Look, there isn't uh, a great tech solution for an odds comparison site in the crypto uh, industry." And very much like uh, there was an odds checker in the UK, and there's been uh, several solutions here in Australia. He goes, "Look, I think I can build uh, a great solution um, in the crypto space," and and he's just beginning on that journey we've got an option in that business and and assisted him in in the sense of who he could go out and uh, to help build in that tech uh and and i think that's exciting space it's definitely a problem that hasn't been solved and if you get it right uh you you can acquire customers in those odds comparison sites very very cheaply compared to being a loan operator uh we've seen odds comparison sites where the average cost per acquisition in regulated markets is $300, $400 acquiring, odds comparison sites acquiring at sub $20 per cost per acquisition. So it's yeah, it's definitely a very affiliate, a very interesting uh, affiliate opportunity and, and probably broader than that also. And um, I mean, it, it, yeah, it, it's great that you have such a strong technical team to evaluate that because there's an endless list of great presentation and just terrible products. So it's, I get bamboozled by them all the time. <laughs> so uh, I, I always need a, a, a beer who's our, our like head engineer and CTO. Um, he uh, luckily is by my side to to steer me uh, in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Quickly. I mean, yeah, that, that that's that's very important because um, um, yeah, uh, if you don't have the right people behind you who can um, you know really evaluate something so you understand what you're really looking at instead of what somebody you know wants you to see um you know that that, that that's kind of uh, important 
Now, it, within um, you know your portfolio, are you mostly focused on horse racing, or do you cover uh, or have a desire or have a desire to cover other sports? No, so we we cover all all sports betting. Um, we're in we've had opportunities in racing data providers, esports data providers, sports data providers, um, vision suppliers, integrity suppliers, voice betting solution, text betting solutions. Uh, payments um, providers, uh, uh, what are, affiliate marketing, um, mm. business to build platforms, build business to build mobile uh, apps. Uh, it can be anything, but really we look at through the lens of is it going to solve an opportunity? Is the tech great? And can we do something besides providing cash? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I think, I yeah. think you, uh, you're involved with, the, with Jonathan at Voxbet. Is that right? Yeah, Did yeah, that's a really it? interesting product, and and yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, really, we've had him, yeah, we've talked to him on this series. Uh, amazingly uh, talented uh, group there, and uh, what they've been able to do, um, well, they've been in the game a long time. You know, they've got the battle scars and experience, and the product works. And I think it's a it's a bet in terms of whether that business turns into being a very valuable business. Is is voice going to take off and there's definitely very good reasons why it could, um, and yeah, we really like them. Very impressed with that team, and 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 think it definitely provides a solution for an operator if they're going to go down that path and and push it and, and give customers that option, which I, I think it definitely makes sense. Um, so yeah, we're we're big cheer cheerleaders or fans of, of that business. Yeah, yeah they're good guys. What what you know, you must get inundated uh or your team with people looking at ai right you know and and this and this is powered by ai and when you look at ai and sports betting and horses what is your team looking at you know what are they looking at to solve i mean because there's so many different applications that we're seeing is there anything that you've been excited about well in the last year we're saying you know this is a great use of ai or, or we should get involved in this we're looking at um, uh, an opportunity at the moment around um, a, a betting syndicate that's using uh, or trying to use uh, AI to to come up with. They've basically got like a PDF format of unlimited amount of books and and trying to use the AI to come out with uh, what are factors they may have missed um, to put into their model. Um, we've also spoken to just got back from a trip from uh, China to one of the artificial uh, intelligence companies there that are basically using uh, their vision of, uh, they've got obviously cameras that monitor uh, traffic and people and where things are, but can they adapt that um, to horses to see if uh, they're, they're, like, so they're looking for humans, whether they've got extra heat to see if they've got, if they're sick. Uh, or if the way that they're extra heat to see if they're angry or is there something like that, can they adapt that to horses, to our uh, horses fit? Are they the way they normally presented? Um, are they got an injury or something like that? So for us, we don't know what the winners in that space are. I guess the interesting thing about what we do is we get to hear and listen to so many different businesses and really our job is we're going to miss a lot of ones that succeed. We have already, like we've made some real mistakes of not going into businesses that have sort of 30, 40 X, but for us is, is it the right fit for us? And do we think that it solves an issue of someone else, especially our investor base is, is very much in, in the industry. It doesn't solve issues for that we know about. And yeah, as I said before, our thing is time. So we're going to miss opportunities, but really we just, listening and, and trying to understand where they're, they're coming from and does it solve an issue that we know about and, and if it does we normally try and, and take up that opportunity great great um, in, uh, in terms of markets uh, you mentioned Australia of course um, Europe um, have you uh, done anything with, with the US market because um, there's there's you know, people are coming up with new things every single day. We we see we get approached um, less often than you, but we do get approached about 
uh, you know, funding uh, some some startup here or there. Um, just uh, curious what your experience has been with the U.S. market. Yes, yeah, so, so obviously we look at all, all suppliers from every market, and then those suppliers we we look to them to uh, do deals not only in the U.S. but in in basically all, all of the markets we don't go into any operators um the only operator that we've uh got a very very small investment in is flutter which owns Fanjul, only because our it, when we do look at operators in regulated markets scale and operational leverage makes such a key difference because uh, the trend over the last 10 years everywhere is for regulation to become tighter taxation to increase and Obviously, scale is is ultra important because if you've got that operational leverage, that marketing and operational costs make up a small percentage of, of your overall revenue, and you can absorb the cost of sales. Um, well, then you've got the flywheel of improving that customer experience and then putting more marketing in. And basically, as you see in these regular markets, you accelerate away from the subscale operators. So, but for us, that's not our our thing. Is focusing on B two B. And yeah, US is is definitely uh, a, a very exciting regulated market. You know, you're still seeing operators growing significant double digit revenues. Where you've seen it in Australia and the UK, that's slowed dramatically. So, if you can get contracts into the US, is, is very exciting. And um, but there's many exciting markets around the world. You know, like do you see markets in in, in South America, in Asia, global crypto um, betting market is just booming. Um, he, for us, we're not a one market place. We we just focus on B two B and where they can sell those services into to licensed operators. Got it. Got it. Yeah, you know we we look at it. You know, at data art sports betting falls under media and entertainment, right? Do you look at? Are you looking primarily at? sports betting opportunities are you looking at ancillary businesses like video and um or content companies or anything that's touching sports betting um you know that it's, it's anything an it's anything that touches um sports betting um right so it's it's quite broad in that but it's narrow in that it's only really sports betting so right. but we yeah we have to think that it's like meaningfully can shift the dial um, and that we can add those things like they, in terms of it's we're not they don't just need m- money and also that it's not an idea it's got to be revenue generating you know it's there's so many people that can spruik an amazing idea but it's actually execution that makes up 98 percent of it in in that you can have the greatest idea in the world but if you're not actually living and breathing and, and will die for that idea they just don't get off the ground you know it's yeah. it's it's amazing how many businesses pre-revenue just don't make it. Um, and so for us, they have to be revenue generating and, um, and yeah, actually have something rather than a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> At least a platform for, for your tech team to review. <laughs> right. Yeah, correct. <laughs> right. <laughs> So well, I mean, well, this is, yeah, this has been a great chat. The other thing I did look at your bio. And I was curious because we've had a professional rugby player on here. We've had an author. We've had interesting people, but we've never had anyone that actually was on Dancing with the Stars. So, you know, That's I, yeah. I don't know if I'm calling you out on that, but no, I really, no. you know, for our audience, you know, this is this is kind of like this is big. There's not many times you're talking to someone sports betting that was also on Dancing with the Stars. How'd that happen and how'd you do? Well, look, the <laughs> horse racing, um, was the only form of gambling for a long, long period of time in Australia. And it was front and back page sort of before I was born and probably the first 10 years uh, of my life. It was the mainstream. Uh, everyone knew about horse racing, the jockeys, the trainers, uh, yeah. the horses that were racing. And so the family had been very well known for a long period of time. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, and that's been a huge advantage that I've had in the industry and, and obviously growing the brand and all that stuff. And I think coming from a, a relatively well-known um, family, I, I was asked as one of the contestants um, to be on Dancing the Stars. This would probably be, must be it's at least 18 years ago or something, I think like 17, 18 years ago. And um, 
Yeah, it was quite. It was good. Oh, you put, probably as an American, the only one person you know on the show was uh, Thor, Chris Hemsworth. He was on the series that I, that I was oh, on. Right, I don't know if you. Right. Yeah. So yeah. and uh, I got kicked off a lot earlier than he did. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I got kicked off pretty early. So, but it was actually really interesting because um, I'd never done any any dancing um, in my life, and and to just have to, you have to do a lot of training, and it, and it's it, it actually was really enjoyable and i was in my early 20s and something different to do and and also uh nerve-wracking in that this probably sounds um like nothing in america's got 300 million people but we only have 25 million people or so and it, you'd have a, a tenth of the population tune in to watch the show yeah that this is when wow. tv was still yeah, still yeah. big and and so yeah, i yeah. was i remember before i went on on the show i'd, I'd go to the toilet like 10 15 times because i was just so nervous i'd never been on <laughs> on tv before and and having to dance in front of millions of people i was just like oh i can't believe i'm doing it but it was great and and a, a really um yeah great experience great memories and uh and my wife says i, I still can't dance but i feel i learned a thing or a thing or two anyway <laughs> You yeah. dance so through presentations. Probably... <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is probably a close second to uh, Dancing with the Stars being on the, on our yeah. interview series. Yeah. This is this is right up there. Our, our ratings are through the roof in the U.S. You, you wouldn't believe it. It's like it's like the Date Art series in the Super Bowl. I mean, you basically you basically hit it. Uh, well, this is great. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, with this series, what we like to do is with someone like you is come back and we, what we'd invite you to do is come back with somebody that you have invested in, you know, one of your companies that you would like us to talk about, you know, come on with them and why you invested in it. That'd be great. Maybe even bring your CTO, you know, so we could really, yeah. because we do like to get under the hood and talk about technology and, and, and we would love to have that. We'd love to have that. Maybe we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get Lord Porchester on next time. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Fantastic. Sounds yeah. good. Excellent. Yeah. Well, well right. thank you for Fantastic. your time, Tom. Thank we you certainly so appreciate it. Yep. Great. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, appreciate Tom. it. Bye -bye. That was great. Bye bye. All right. Bye. Bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -